this problem we're going to look at an Atwood's machine, which consists of two blocks connected together by a rope, and that rope passes over a massless, frictionless pulley. With the pulley being massless and frictionless, that means that we're not going to need to worry about the rotation of the pulley. That's something that can be looked at as you look at torque and angular accelerations, but for this problem, that has nothing to do with it. And so this is true anytime you have an extremely light pulley, something where you don't need to worry about how the pulley affects the problem. So we're going to try and calculate the acceleration of these two blocks and we're going to try and find the tension in the rope. To do this problem, the first thing to do is to figure out what direction these objects are going to accelerate. So we have block M1 which is 3 kilograms and block M2 which is 8 kilograms. And so M1 the weight of M1 is 3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So the weight of M1 is 29.4 newtons. The weight of M2 is 8 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is 78.4 newtons. So looking at that, we see that M2 is heavier than M1. The force that's trying to make the pulley rotate clockwise is bigger than the force that's trying to make the pulley rotate counterclockwise. And so that means that M1 is going to get pulled up and M2 is going to get pulled down. And as I set this up, I'm going to make the direction that these boxes accelerate be my positive direction for each box. And the way that I'm going to go through and solve this is I'm going to look at the boxes individually and set up equations for the forces on the boxes. Um, it's a little bit longer method than, you know, there are some other shorter methods, but I think this method is easier for people to try and understand how to set up the equations to calculate the tension. Um, a lot of people are able to calculate the acceleration very easily using some shortcuts, but they'll have problem calculating the tension. And this method, it puts everything out there and um, becomes very easy to calculate both pieces. So I'm going to look at each box individually and look at the forces acting on each box. So for mass 1, it's 3 kilograms. It's being pulled upward by the tension in the rope. It's being pulled downward by the force of gravity, which is 29.4 newtons. And we said that this box accelerates upwards, so I'm going to make up the positive direction. That means the tension, since it's upward, is going to be positive, but the force of gravity, since it's in the opposite direction, it's going to be negative. So the net force acting on mass 1, I add the individual forces together. So the tension is positive, so it's plus T, and that's plus negative 29.4 Newtons. Newton's second law also tells us the relationship between that total force acting on mass 1 and its acceleration. It says that the net force acting on mass 1 is the mass of mass 1, 3 kilograms, times its unknown acceleration. So if I put those two pieces together, I have that T minus 29 point four newtons equals three kilograms times a. Again, I'm gonna leave off the units for this just to make things a little bit easier. You can put them in at the end. So here I have one equation that relates the tension and the acceleration. But if I'm going to try and solve with two unknowns, I need to have two equations. And so I'm going to get my second equation from looking at mass two. Mass 2 is 8 kilograms. It's being pulled down by the force of gravity, which is 78.4 newtons. It's being pulled upwards by the tension in the rope T. Because this is a massless, frictionless pulley, the tension on both ends of the rope is the same. One of the things that's different about this part is because mass 2 accelerates downward, I 
need to set this up so that down is my positive direction. That way, in my equations, A represents the same quantity for both things. If A is a positive value, and that's what I set it up, I made the direction of the acceleration positive. If A is a positive value, it has the same positive value for both objects. Again, they're connected together, so they have the same size acceleration. So as I set this up, I need to, if I'm making down positive, I need to make the forces that are down positive and the forces that are up negative. And so the net force that's acting on mass 2 is the force of gravity, positive 78.4 newtons plus negative t. And I have that the net force on mass 2 is the mass, 8 kilograms, times the unknown acceleration, A. And again, putting those two pieces together, I have 78.4 minus T equals 8A. And again, at this step, sometimes people get confused on why in one equation it's the tension minus the weight equals the mass times the acceleration. In the other one, it's the weight minus the tension equals the mass times the acceleration. And they worry about trying to memorize how to set it up and which, w which way you do it for each object. And this is where, if you understand conceptually what you're doing, it makes it a lot easier. If you make the direction of the acceleration positive, then you just look and make sure that everything that's in the direction of the acceleration is positive, and everything that's in the opposite direction is negative. That's why for mass 1, the tension is positive, the weight is negative. That's why for mass 2, the weight is positive, the tension is negative. You just look at which one is in the direction of the acceleration, and you make that direction of the acceleration the positive direction. So to go through and solve this, we need to use substitution. So we need to solve for one variable in terms of the other variable and substitute it in. And so I'm going to take the equation from mass 1 and solve it for t. I'm going to add 29.4 to both sides. So I have t equals 3a plus 29.4. And then I can take this quantity and I can substitute it in for t into this equation, into the other equation. So doing that, I have that 78.4 minus t, but again, t is 3a plus 29.4, and that equals 8a. Now when you're doing this, be careful t is that entire quantity 3a plus 29.4. And so when we substitute this in, we're subtracting that entire quantity. So it's 78.4 minus the quantity 3a plus 29.4. Again, you need to put that in parentheses to remind yourself to distribute that negative sign. You're subtracting both of those pieces. So doing that, you have 78.4 minus 3a minus 29.4 equals 8a. 78.4 minus 29.4 is 49. I can add 3a to both sides. I have 11a equals 49. Or I get that the acceleration of the two boxes is 4.4545 meters per second squared. And then to find the tension, you're just plugging that acceleration back into one of your original equations. And so from mass 2, I had the equation 78.4 minus t equaled 8 times a. So I have 78.4 minus t equals 8 times 4.4545. And if I solve that for t, I get that the tension in the rope is 42.7636 newtons.
So it's always good at this point, when you're finished with the problem, to go back and double check that everything makes sense. So if the tension is 42.7, let's look to see if that makes sense in the problem. So we said that mass 1 accelerates upwards. So if we look at mass 1, because mass 1 accelerates upwards, the upward force on mass 1 needs to be bigger than the downward force. So we found that the tension in the rope was 42.7. So you have 42.7 newtons acting upwards, 29.4 newtons acting downwards. And so that does give a net force on M1 that's upwards, which will make it accelerate up. Again, we can do the same thing if we look at mass M2. You have 78.4 newtons acting down. We only have 42.76 newtons acting up. So because the downward force is bigger than the upward force, it will make M2 accelerate downward. So we can go back and we can double check that. Again, with the Atwood's machine, the tension in your rope should be bigger than the smaller weight, and it should be smaller than the bigger weight. Again, it has to be in between those values so that it pulls M1 up and it lets M2 go down. The other thing to double check is to look at our acceleration. Because neither of these objects is in free fall, M2 is trying to fall down, but it's dragging M1 behind it, we should get an acceleration that's less than free fall. It's less than 9.8 meters per second squared. And so if you get something that's bigger, or especially if you get something that's exactly equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, you know that you made a mistake. One of the most common mistakes is setting something up with the negative signs that are wrong, forgetting to distribute a negative sign, and you often will get 9.8 meters per second squared as an answer. If you understand why that can't be true, it helps you go back and catch why there's a mistake and look for that mistake before you continue on to do the rest of the problem. Again, these Atwood machines problems, there are shorter ways to do this, um, but Again, if you're trying to find the acceleration, you're trying to find the tension, you need to have these different equations. And if you get to a point where you start including the mass of the pulley and you need to look at rotations, you need to actually set up these equations this way. So this method is actually better to prepare you for more difficult topics because you need these equations to go through and relate everything together in those problems.